Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. We're standing here in front of the newly restored trading hall that we fixed up in the last episode, although I'm recording this directly after that episode, so I haven't had much time to mess with these guys and see if the trades are okay. Hopefully everything here should be hunky-dory, but I want to focus on another project using villagers this week. We are going to head back out to a certain desert village and we are going to get some revenge because I decided after the original raid that I did out in that desert village where I was trying out raids for the first time and lost that I was going to go back there and get my revenge. So today is the day. <laughs> today we're going to head out to that village out there in the desert, try and scavenge what we can from the surroundings, try and restore the population of the village, and then we are going to kit that place out and defend it against our next pillager raid. For a start, I'm going to bring some wool with me. I'm probably going to make a whole bunch of beds while I'm there because as we know, beds are a pretty vital ingredient in the village life cycle and beds are what is required for them to spawn more villagers in. If we want them to breed, there's got to be beds available for the kids. So I'm going to grab some wood, I'm going to grab some wool and that should be all I need to bring with me for the moment. We'll need a few village profession blocks, but I have a few of those tucked away in my ender chest here. Here. got a village box with a few profession blocks so we should be able to start the village's population growing and then from there we can figure out what we're going to do with them and how the village is going to be best defended and here it is our poor little sand village here in the desert and there are actually still some survivors around here including a couple of village cats <laughs> which is nice to see spent a little bit of time with them lately but over here in this house Unless they have moved a little bit, we should still find, yep, we have one villager in here who I thought was the sole survivor of the previous village raid. And for whatever reason, this one seems to have been stuck on that staircase since that raid happened. Probably a little bit traumatized, no doubt. And oh, you want to come out? Fair enough. <laughs> Rejoin society, my friend. Become a farmer. Yes. Oh, excellent. Well done. Because yes, what we need to do is get this novice farmer over here to uh, breed with the other farmer in the village, the one who is all the way over here. And we'll get these two together at a meeting site, like a bell or something like that. We do have a village bell here, so hopefully they will be able to come around to the meeting site. And we're going to get them to breed the population of this village back up to a reasonable level. I'm going to spend a lot of time around here doing basically what I did over at the Jungle Swamp Village. So I don't need to take you through the entire process of it. But we're just going to make sure they have enough food to eat so they have enough uh, willingness to breed. And hopefully before long we will have a big population of villagers. Because the raid tower, the pillager tower itself, is literally just over the hill over here and yes there's a desert temple there as well but i'm not worried about that right now we are going to outfit this whole town with a variety of i guess obstacles and traps and fail safes to make sure that when the population is in place and once we have a better population of villagers here they are going to be well defended Hey folks, welcome back. So after a couple of days time, I have made some preparations which I think will probably be able to protect this village from a raid. In its most basic form here, what we have is a village with a very tall wall around it. And in some cases, not all the way around, but most of the way around, we have some water, which is hopefully going to slow down the raid when the pillagers come in. But I have been working really hard off camera to get the population of this village up. And while it may not seem like there are that many people around, there are actually quite a few. Enough to spawn an iron golem, and the majority of them work down here in this little basin. I'm going to work on the structure of this village and having like actual houses and stuff for them a little bit later but for now i want to see if the wall alone is going to be enough and i think it might be but it totally depends on whether or not pillagers will spawn within the radius of the wall based on the proximity to the beds over here i'm not really sure how those mechanics work and some people have said that they just spawn in the distance usually in the direction that you're looking but some people have said that sometimes their radius depends on the player and sometimes it depends on the villagers so the details on this are a little bit hazy however i want to be absolutely assured that we will be able to breed up the population of this village again if anyone in this perimeter ends up dying in the raid because okay 
Confession time, I've been doing a little bit of this work on live streams and I accidentally triggered a raid here which I was able to successfully complete. If I go into my advancements, I look in the adventure tab at the top here, you can see I have Hero of the Village for successfully defending a village from a raid. What actually happened was I had four villagers here. I was in the beginnings of breeding up the population and then a raid party, or not a raid party, a pillager patrol spawned inside the radius of the village. They were kind of over here, and it wasn't necessarily inside the wall, because I hadn't built the wall at the time. They were just kind of hanging out nearby, and they had spawned because they were close to me. Now, like a fool, I followed my first instinct and ended up killing one of the pillagers, who happened to be the patrol captain, before I really thought about what I was doing. A raid triggered instantly, and three of the four villagers I had at the time got killed. The only way I was able to preserve one of them was by locking him in here and basically blocking it all up with sandstone so that nobody could see him. What I didn't realize at the time was that vexes, when they are summoned by an evoker, will mostly target the player, but it is possible apparently for them to target villagers. So locking a guy in the center of the village isn't necessarily going to guarantee his survival, because even though the melee attack is like the vindicators and the ranged attack is like the crossbow wielding pillagers won't be able to attack him, it's possible that the evoker can. The evoker also has that fangs attack, which goes through walls, and so if you don't kill the evokers very quickly or distract them and have you as their target, you might end up losing villagers even if they are inside of houses. And I think that might be what ended up with me losing the raid here in the first place. So what I want to do, despite all of that advice, what I want to do is make sure at least two, if not more, of these villagers are kept in a cell underground where they can be protected, where they aren't part of the surface population of villagers who are going to get picked off potentially by the pillagers if the pillagers manage to get inside here. Hopefully they won't, but my concern is that they may, and so I want to make sure that I have a couple of villagers preserved. And this meeting right here is probably going to be the ideal time to do that, because what I want to do is set up, let's take the terracotta from here, I want to set up a little holding cell underground where I can guarantee that these villagers are going to be safe. So to pick them sort of at random, I'm going to dig a hole underneath these guys, and that's going to be my holding cell. I'll try and push a couple more villagers in here, I think maybe the... Yep, the armorer can go in there as well, and you are one of the stonemasons. Let's push the other shepherd in here for the moment if I can. I'll just give them a, a bit of a nudge, a bit of a nudge towards this hole over here. Just, uh, just, just get in there. There we go. Fantastic stuff. So these four villagers are going to be our salvation in the event that the raid fails. And I've covered them over with this glazed terracotta here so that we can make sure we know exactly where that is. And all we'll need to do is dig a path for them to get out once the raid is over. They should be perfectly safe down there, except maybe I should probably put a torch in there with them to make sure a zombie doesn't spawn. How about that? <laughs> there we go. So now hopefully they should be safe from the raid itself, although vexes could still potentially fly in there and attack them. We're going to have to make very, very sure that we don't end up, uh, you know, coaxing the vexes towards that area. Instead, we should steer well clear and, and distract them ourselves. But as far as this goes, I'm really interested in testing the wall defenses before we test anything else in terms of, you know, making the villagers run inside their homes, locking everybody away, that kind of stuff. So I think it's probably time to head over to the pillager outpost over there and taunt some pillagers and try and kill one of the patrol captains. I'm going to put any of my useless items away in here because I think having a clear inventory is probably going to be a great deal of help with this. For the sake of this video, because I didn't necessarily want this to happen on the live stream, it just sort of did, I'm going to revoke this advancement so we can actually get it again when I hopefully defend the village from the raid. So what we're going to do is a quick command here. We're going to type slash advancement. We're going to autofill that first of all, and you can choose revoke from the list over here. So you can either revoke or give advancements. I'm just going to take it from me in this case. We're going to revoke from pixel riffs only, and then we're going to find, there we go, hero of the village. It's right there at the top. So I'm going to hit that, and I have revoked the advancement from myself. So now when I go back into the advancements tab, it's not even there, and that one actually unlocks in the advancements tab once you've completed the raid. It kind of, it, it pops up after the fact. So I think we should hopefully be able to start a raid in the morning. I might as well do that in the morning because I don't want other mobs to be spawning around here and become part of the raid or just get in the way. And I'm pretty sure I've lit up the village perimeter well enough, but you never know. 
So in theory, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to go over to the Pillager Outpost over there and kill a Patrol Captain to get the Bad Omen effect. As soon as I come back into the proximity here, I'm going to trigger a raid. Now, I'm not entirely sure what the radius of the raid is going to be because if you walk outside of the boundary of a raid, it isn't always possible to see the life bar at the top of the screen. So that's going to be a concern. I also hope that the pillagers won't spawn inside the radius of this wall, but I'm interested in seeing whether that's affected by the proximity of the beds, the workstations, or just a distance from me, the player. So I'm going to try and stand as central to the village as possible, as far as the wall goes, and see exactly where we find the raiders spawning. And then after that, it should be simple enough to take care of them from on top of the wall here, give or take the vexes, and I should probably actually remove the water sources around here. I had a thought that these might be good defense, but in reality, I think maybe we'll end up with some of the pillagers climbing those water sources instead of being pushed away by them. So I will just keep it as the moat for now, and this little area over here can probably just get some of those sand blocks removed. There we go, just to make sure that nothing can hop over the wall at any point. Without further ado, because I'm uh, a little bit nervous about this whole thing going down, especially after I lost the raid I did on camera last time, let's swoop over here and see if we can find a patrol captain out here in the desert. There's one. Let's swoop down on him, give him a couple of taps with a sword. And there we go. We've got Bad Omen. Now, I only want Bad Omen 1 for this raid, so I'm going to make a quick getaway and quickly open my inventory. Yep, that is just regular old Bad Omen. Okay, folks, it comes down to this. We're going to swoop down into the village perimeter, and let's get this raid started. Here we go. The raid boss bar is filling up, and uh, the villagers should be ringing the bell. One of them should be heading over there, and they will all end up swarming to their beds when they do that. If they don't have houses and doors to run into, they will just end up going to their beds. So let's see. Okay, so the raiders did spawn kind of in my field of view, which is an interesting part of this. They're all going to go over there and immediately get stuck in the river, which is great. This is good strategy for the time being. We're going to pick them off with the bow, which I have fully repaired for this. And there's only one raider remaining. It's the patrol captain. He's dead. Brilliant. The raid reforms. Now let's look out in this direction and see if once again the raiders spawn in my eye line, because if they do, this could be a valuable strategy for players to set up traps on this side of the village in future. Let's see. Nope, the raid bar is full and it looks like they may be coming from somewhere else. I don't see them coming over the dunes over here, so that is uh, <laughs> that is not necessarily going to be a valid strategy. We've got a few of them trying to cross the river here. This is the widest part of the river, so this is a nice, a nice easy section for me to pick them off. In fact, it's probably the one that was most strategically viable the first time we tried this raid. And this wave actually has a couple of vindicators in it. It's got three or four of them as well as the pillagers, but for the most part, we're not really going to see much resistance from these guys. We've also lost the raid boss bar at this point because I am too far away from the center of the village, which I think is still counting as those beds over there. So maybe if we spread the beds out in the near future, we will end up with a wider raid radius <laughs> and uh, hopefully be able to see the fullness of the raid from a distance. Because see, I've just got bad omen again from killing that patrol captain outside of the radius of the village. And I don't know if that bug has been fixed, but in previous versions of Minecraft, before we updated to 1.14.2, it was possible for them to uh, basically spawn raids infinitely, which was not a very good thing. So I'm not sure at this point if I'm on wave one of the raid or if we are on wave three. So that's going to be interesting to find out. Let's see where the pillagers have spawned from this time. Oh, there they are. Hi, hello. We've got a Ravager with them this time. So that means potentially this is wave three of a raid. I wonder if they've kind of cancelled out the possibility of players getting the bad omen effect and having that start a second raid for this update, and it just continues whatever raid the game detects is in progress. I hope that's the case, because otherwise we could end up with a bit of a serious problem here. But nope, that Vindicator is going down nice and easy. The wall is very, very effective for me right now. I am hoping that the Evokers, when they turn up, are not gonna cause too much of a problem for us. And I'm also sincerely hoping <laughs> that we don't end up with any of the Raiders spawning inside the village perimeter at this stage. There we go, we've got a few over there. Oh, the witches could also potentially be a problem if they start to throw uh, potions over the wall at my at my, uh, my villagers, but I think we should be okay. I think this is manageable. 
and it looks like none of them are, f are pathfinding over the sand dune over there into the village. There is a gap in between the two, but I was a little bit worried that if they were running fast enough or if a Ravager's hitbox was large enough, they could potentially find their way from that sand dune over the wall and into the village on that side. But it looks like the wall is really the most effective thing we could have done here because it's making it possible for us to pick off all of these guys and they can't get in the village to damage the villagers at all. Now, I'm running a little low on food, so I might just quickly hop back in here and... Oh, I think I have a puffer fish in the moat. Uh, the wandering trader was actually going to sell me some puffer fish. There we go. I've got some bread in here. I'll grab that as a backup because I'm running low on chicken. Look at all the villagers sweating. It's okay, friends. It should be all right. I think we've got a good strategy here now. So yeah, I had a puffer fish in the moat that was traded to me by the wandering trader, and I think it may have just poisoned one of the vindicators, which is pretty funny. Of course, the witches can heal themselves, which is a little bit of a problem, but really not that much of a problem if we keep focusing on fire on them there we go wave number four question mark probably down at this point okay that time i actually heard the horn so i could actually hear which direction the pillagers were coming from and it looks like they're all coming from over there there is an evoker and the evoker i really want to run into the water yes there we go okay because that is the big problem with these raids is the evoker <laughs> the evoker summoning vexes is always a serious problem and it's best if you kill them off really really quickly because otherwise they can summon vexes it can ruin your day and potentially give the pillagers a much better chance at killing your villagers too so okay looks like we've got one guy down here the rest of them seem to have gone around to the right so i'm just going to quickly check yep there we are they're all getting trapped Trapped in the moat and around it. Fantastic. It's kind of cool actually to have this village house over here as part of the moat. It's kind of like it's that area has been flooded and they've abandoned it and moved to higher ground. So right now I have the bad omen effect again. I don't think yet. Yeah, okay, if I walk back into the uh, the radius of the raid area, it's not triggering a second raid bar, which was a bug in the previous version. There we go. Do I have bad omen too now? No, okay, I don't. And this guy over here is the last one in this wave. Fantastic. We can just take care of you. He's picked up the banner, which makes him another patrol captain. Okay, there we go. That is wave five. And with any luck, like I said, I'm, I'm really, really nervous about the idea of pillagers actually spawning inside my village perimeter. But they do seem to be spawning a fair distance away from me as a player. So... The horn is coming from over there again. Yes, okay, we have an evoker coming in. Hopefully, once again, he gets stuck in the moat. Yep, and we can take him out with a bow nice and quickly. Very good. There is one wave, and I'm not sure if it's this one or another one, where an evoker will appear riding a ravager. So, in theory, we should target the evoker in that wave before anyone else. And yes, once again, the wall and the moat are proving to be valuable additions to this village. I think this is, <laughs> this is actually turning out way better than I expected it to. Yeah, we got two more illagers left and the villagers can't sleep right now. They're really nervous, but I'm going to sleep just because I don't want to end up needing to sleep during the last wave of this raid, which is potentially the wave that we are getting next. Let's see where our straggling pillagers are. Looks like there is one Vindicator left down here who I can take out as long as I can shoot him with an arrow. There we go. Yep, one more left. Where is our final pillager? I will have a quick look around the... Yep, okay, that's another patrol captain. Good. Let me just sweep down and get some of the emeralds and totems and stuff real fast because it's nice having this stuff as loot. And while the pillagers aren't as much of a threat to the village, it's going to be nice to quickly get around the perimeter and grab the 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 extra stuff oh my poor puffer fish is over here as well oh what a shame gonna put him up in an item frame and call him the mvp now let's hop down onto the wall over here take out this final pillager uh should be able to zap him from here within the boundary of the village there we go and raid wave number four seven at this point i'm hoping okay it sounds like the ominous horn is coming from over there and from the top of the uh the kind of pig pen over here we should be able to see our final set of pillagers rolling in okay and the evokers are actually attacking the golems and they've got the vexes coming in as well so that evoker was able to see over the side of the wall thanks to the increased height the, on that on top of that ravager so that's that's a concern and the vexes have already taken out one of the iron golems but hopefully i should be able to dispatch those we have an evoker here who seems to have we have a vindicator rather over here who has no regard for his own safety currently being kind of driving into the uh 
<laughs> the lava in this blacksmith. Are these ravages really the only two things left? Because it seems like there's probably one witch around, but I don't seem to see any other pillagers around here. That's the Ravager taken care of. Okay, there is a second wave of the raid that has spawned right here on the perimeter, but this may be the last set of them, I think, as far as this raid goes. There might be another Evoker, but the Iron Golem might have actually taken him out, which I would be very happy about if they have. Occasionally, there's another Evoker running around with this crew, and it seems like the guy is there at the back. Yes, so I will try and... Yes, we took him out from a distance. Great stuff. Okay, we've got a couple of Vexes flying at us, but as long as they're distracted by me... Whoa, okay, they do really pack a punch so I need to get out of the water over here and into the air so that I can defend my village from up here and yeah we do not want those guys we do not want this evoker summoning more of them and we don't want them getting in whoa okay I'm gonna die I'm gonna die oh great oh wonderful right <laughs> let me let me hop over the wall and see if I can reclaim some of my stuff because that's not going to be great if we have vexes running around out here lucky for me the raiders do seem to be contained outside of that wall and uh, I've got a spare set of elytra somewhere but the vexes all seem to be dying off thanks to the uh, the the summoning time that they have from that evoker and they're all kind of hanging out at the village perimeter right now so that's probably a sign that I can get my elytra out grab some more fireworks fly over there and collect the rest of my stuff. You see if I can grab as much of this stuff as possible and then fly away. Oh, dang it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Looks like I'm definitely going to need to make a quicker getaway than that. I was not expecting this raid to be able to take me out that way. Hopefully, if uh, the villagers all stay in that area of the village, then we should be all right. Let's see if we can take out these guys individually from a distance. There we go. There we go. Okay, come at me one at a time. That's good. Man, they pack a punch, though. Oh, my gosh. And I don't have any food right now, so I can't heal. Ah! Oh, realizing I've totally missed my chance here to have a totem of undying on me, considering how many have we been getting of them from the rest of the raid. I'll try and hold this in my offhand, go back and get this first little cache of stuff, and then gear up. There we go. Okay, we can put those on. We can put those on. I've got my turtle shell helmet on right now. That's how desperate I am to reclaim all of my stuff that's over here. Man, those guys run around so fast. Okay. All right, let's make an escape. I've got my Riptide Trident on me, so here's hoping I can get away. Brilliant. Okay, let's try and dolphin leap down the river a little bit, and hopefully none of the Vexes have followed me. Okay, and I can get geared back up again. Wow. Man, I did not expect these guys to be quite that vicious, but it turns out they really are. Okay, I've got my sword back, I've got my bow and arrows back, and I've got a Totem of Undying in my hand. I really should have been using my shield a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> but let's see. Let's see what we can do about these remaining raiders because there is no time limit on a raid as far as I can tell and I think we should be able to take these guys out. We can definitely set a good few of them on fire in the process. How about that? There we go. We've got the evoker dealt with. We've got the vexes coming in but hopefully we should be able to get away. <laughs> I'm going to use the trident trick again if I can. Yes. Okay, we're in the air. Let's grab some food real fast. Let's get some healing on the go. Okay, this is, this is feeling a little bit more manageable now I've got all of my stuff. I should have more backup gear, I think. There we go. Let's swoop down and take out these last few stragglers. The Vexes are technically part of the raid as well, but hopefully they won't last long after this. Okay, they're taking bullets for the other pillagers, but yes. Uh, okay, we've got one more wave of the raid left. I think we can probably manage this as long as I can pick up all the rest of my stuff here. Let's put away any of the stuff that I won't need, so hopefully if we end up in a sticky situation again, we have a little bit more stuff to defend ourselves. Let's get the infinity bow back in here. Let's put away some of these. Let's chuck out some of these crossbows. And we've got a totem of undying in case we need it. This wave of raiders has spawned on this side of the village. So hopefully we can do our best to take out the evokers before they summon too many vexes. There's one there riding. Yep, okay, let's try and take him out as best we can. Okay, the vexes are coming in. Let's try and lure them away from the village as well. And we can possibly... Uh, yeah, we can take them out from the air where we can. I think a couple of those pillagers may even have multi-shot on their crossbows. And wow, there's a lot of vexes right now. This is not good. <laughs> not a situation I want to be in. My priority right now is stopping these guys. Oh no, oh no. Oh no, that's not good. That's not good. Okay, whoa, I'm getting absolutely battered here. Oh, the Totem of Undying absolutely saved my bacon here. That is, oh, that was so good. I think, yeah, okay, I've got my bow on me. I think I took out one of the Evokers. I need to take out the other one very, very badly. Oh, and there are other mobs spawning around here as well. I don't want to go back into the village and potentially draw the Vexes to the villagers, so... 
Okay, it looks like they may be just dying in mid-air now. I just don't want any of the other hostile mobs to spawn inside the village perimeter. Nope, looks like the Vexes might be dying. Okay, great. I think I took out both of the Evokers, so this might be a good time to sleep. Oh dear, yep, there's a Vex coming for me now. Okay, and it phased through the bed and it didn't attack me while I was sleeping, which is good. So hopefully all of the other hostile mobs will be able to despawn. And as long as this guy continues to target me and not the villagers, I'll be happy. But, oh, <laughs> I had to be very good at shooting right there just in case I didn't shoot some of the, the villagers that are out here. Is that the last of the vexes or do we have any more? Nope, looking at this crew down here, I'm pretty sure that was the last of the Evokers. I'm so, so happy about that because those guys are really the MVP as far as the raiding team goes. They are so, so tough to deal with when they're out in the open like this. And they're difficult in Woodland Mansions, but at least in Woodland Mansions they don't run around so fast. The wall takes care of basically everything else though, and yeah, that guy definitely has multi-shot on his crossbow. I want to play around with that more. That seems like so much fun to have. Uh, hopefully, if we're lucky, this should be the final wave of the raid taken care of. And we did it! Yay! And now we get to see the effects of Hero of the Village, because the villagers will all let off fireworks in celebration. We can even let these guys out of their little hole now, because uh, in the past it has been possible for them to let off fireworks and accidentally damage themselves, because the fireworks actually have a bit of a damage radius. But look at that, folks! We get a firework display to celebrate our victory, and oh boy. Oh, that was tense. We died a bunch of times. Like, my death count is probably up to 10 now, just in this episode. Wow. So, yeah, that was that was a rush. That was quite the experience. Raids on hard are no joke. And you can absolutely guarantee that <laughs> that's, this wall has been the most useful thing in this entire situation. Obviously, right now, the moat is, is trapping some of the mobs that would otherwise be burning in the sun or just despawning, but we can go down there and collect up some of the loot from this raid as well, because I I used a Totem of Undying, and I think I will need these in future if I'm going to try some more of these raids. And I am so, so thankful that all of these villagers are still around, because while I wasn't particularly attached to any of them, I haven't done like a huge amount of trading with them or anything like that, it's just nice to be able to have the villagers survive one of these raids. We can take down our days since last incident sign that I put on the side of this chest. We have had a successful raid. And look at the extra totem of undying we've got out of that. Brilliant stuff. Superb. Now, I want to quickly go over some of the effects of having Hero of the Village while we've still got that status effect. Because, naturally, the villagers are going to give us a massive discount thanks to the fact that we have successfully defended them from a raid. But it is also the case that whilst they are going about their daily routine, and these guys still seem a little bit shell-shocked by the raid itself, so their workday has kind of been cancelled, they will actually throw you items related to their professions. So, for example, the stonemasons will throw clay at you, which is <laughs> kind of the only renewable way of farming clay right now. Um, some of the, the other professions will throw some of the lighter items, like the, I think the librarians will throw stuff like paper, Basically, the stuff that you get from their their smallest traits, their kind of first level traits, they're not going to be throwing enchanted books at you or anything. Let's dig these guys out of this hole because I think they've all lost their professions while they've been down here being unable to pathfind to their workstations. There you go, my friends. Be free. But the Hero of the Village effect lasts for basically the same sort of duration that Bad Omen had. So uh, yeah, you'll, you'll find yourself able to trade with villagers for discounts and so forth for quite a while. And I, I am kind of interested to see if either of these guys is going to throw stuff at me, considering that I am... I am now their savior. <laughs> what do you think, fellas? Yeah, it looks like they didn't have a huge amount of stuff they wanted to throw at me. Maybe if I hang around the village work center, maybe these guys will show their appreciation. But as far as I'm concerned, this was a huge success. <laughs> Apart from a couple of deaths, we managed to survive the raid. We managed to take care of all of the villagers inside of here. There we go. That guy just threw me some clay. How awesome is that? Thank you so much, man. In fact, considering that his clay ball trade is now down to five, if he threw me another block, I could get a couple of emeralds out of him as well. That's super great. So we are, we are done with the raid. We have actually successfully managed to do a raid on camera for the survival guide. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Sorry if it was a bit of a longer one, but I feel like there was so much action that we had to cover it all. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.